So I recently turned 30. So I like to think about what I've done in theoretical computer science because that's my main area of expertise. So I like to share some of my experiences in theoretical computer science from when I started working in the subject to when I became a professor. So one of the first experiences I've had was when I was a teaching assistant. And the video that you're seeing right now is when I gave a guest lecture when I was a teaching assistant for the theoretical computer science class at Arizona State University. So the class I was a co-teaching assistant with one other person for wait for it, 360 students. Oh my god, that was quite an experience. And this lecture was about decidability, so about about the acceptance problem for DFAs, about the emptiness problem for DFAs, NFAs, etc. I've never given a lecture to that big of an audience before, and the footage that you're watching right now is when my mom came to watch the lecture because I told her about it and she was super excited because it would be my first time in giving a big lecture like this. So in watching this footage again, I starting to think about all of the people that have helped me along the way, especially my parents, but also the friends that I've acquired through the classes that I've taught, as well as the ones that I've been in, and I am very grateful to all of these people. Next up is some footage from what are called recitations. Recitations are these lecture help sessions that students really find useful because you can practice a lot of problems that you don't get to encounter during lecture. So computer science, especially theoretical computer science, is a great example of where you need to practice a lot of problems to really understand what is being asked because it is like learning a new language. In fact, it literally is a new language. And what I thought would be interesting would be to record all of the sessions, video record them, and upload them to my YouTube channel at the time. And so the students who were not able to attend their own recitation section are now able to see some of the examples that we worked on, some of the questions that are being asked, so that they are able to be caught up with the material even if they weren't able to attend. This next one is a two-part talk that I gave when I was a PhD student at Arizona State. And there I was talking about some of my own research as well as the relationship between the research and the implementation behind it. So the talk's name was Optimizing Post-Optimization, which I think is one of the coolest names I've ever come up with. So the two parts of the talk were about how I implemented something in C++, a fast programming language, so to speak. And it was applied to a research problem called post-optimization. So you see optimizing the C++ code to a problem called post-optimization. And you're looking at this footage from some weird angle. The reason why that's the case was a very interesting story, an unfortunate one. So I had quite a bit of experience in recording my own screen, my laptop screen, as well as using my GoPro. So this footage that you're seeing right now is from the GoPro. And the problem was that the moment I hit record on my laptop, the graphics card failed completely. The laptop was completely unusable at all. And as a result, I had to borrow some poor audience member's laptop in order to present off of it. And so I don't have the screen recording because I didn't want to record on their laptop, obviously. So when things can go wrong, they will go wrong. So you gotta be prepared for that. So the funny thing is that a few days after that presentation where my laptop failed, I bought a new one from Apple and it was a model that just came out, I think a few months before. It was, this was early 2017. And the funny thing is that when I tried to record on that screen, that laptop along with my GoPro, that graphics card failed. So I guess Apple just really didn't want me to give this presentation at all. And the thing that you should learn from this is that problems with technology always will happen. Good luck out there. So skipping forward a year to May 2018 when I gave my first conference talk at a real conference. And in this case, I was presenting some of the research that would eventually make its way into my dissertation. So in this case, I used LaTeX and Beamer to present my research because you need to have all of the equations formatted correctly, as well as all of the tables and any diagrams that you use. One thing that you should realize is that many different universities and institutions are going to have different ways to hook up your laptop. So in this case, I happen to have brought a connector for both HDMI and VGA, and I was lucky that I happened to guess correctly that they use VGA, but the laptop that I bought from Apple before only has USB-C and their system wasn't able to hook up to that, and that wasn't made aware to me ahead of time. It wasn't on the conference website or anything. So as I said before, be prepared for when something fails because things can and will fail. The research was actually quite impractical in a certain sense, so there's a certain domain where the research is very viable and has practical consequences, and what I was doing there was proving upper bounds of the domain of the problem where it goes beyond practicality. 
in the hopes that it would be able to be brought down into the practical area. And in some sense, in my dissertation, I eventually got to that point. But in the conference, I was in the mathematics mindset. And so the improvement was on the mathematics side, but not necessarily in the practical side. So one thing I recommend for any computer science student who is either already a mathematics student also, or likes doing mathematics research, is to always think about the practical and not necessarily finding an improvement somewhere because, because if your research doesn't hit the practical side of the problem, no practitioner is going to care about you. And so the last one I wanna talk about is my PhD dissertation defense. I don't have the video on me right now, but I'm pretty sure it exists out there somewhere. But one thing I wanna talk about is the intro slide that I used. So as you can see on the intro slide, I have the title, I have the name, the institution, blah, blah, blah. But you can see that there's a scorpion at the bottom. And you may wonder, why is there a scorpion there if you're giving a mathematics slash computer science presentation? And the reason is that on the morning of my PhD dissertation defense, I got bit by a scorpion when I was lying in bed. And I'm like, oh my God, am I not gonna be able to pass my defense as a result? Do I have to reschedule things again? And it turned out that I was able to make my dissertation. And the reason why I put it on the slide was that it reminds me that there are going to be continuous problems, as you can see, throughout your career. And you need to be flexible as much as possible in order to deal with them. And let's say I dealt with a scorpion. So hopefully that was interesting. This is only a small piece of all of the theoretical computer science research and teaching stuff that I've done throughout my career. If you wanna hear more about this, put it into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. machines, we talked about non-deterministic and multi-tape Turing machines, and so we want to be able to convince ourselves that Turing machines really are the end of the road. They are the model of computation for real computers. All right, so let's get this on the road. All right, so if you don't know me by now, I'm Ryan Doherty. I'm a PhD student here, and I'm going to be talking about something that's been happening in terms of my research area. and. Uh, I like the title because it really does convey uh, both parts of the talk, the first one being today and the one being the week from today. Whatever that leads me to, that has to be a final state. So let's do this. I'm going to make a start state called Q0. I, I can name these any way I want, but uh, the, the reason I'm going to be calling this will be important in a second. So we got to accept the one that has three zeros in a row. And this strategy is good in that once we figure out, okay, we have to accept this string, let's fill in all the other transitions later. So I gotta accept this one. 